Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick of the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about my Dynasty Do Not Draft list for fantasy football in 2021 for your guys' Dynasty startup drafts. In this video, we're going to be discussing a couple of players that, as of right now, based off of current average draft position, I just feel like are not going to be worthy of that given pick. Now, obviously, right now, not a lot of people are doing Dynasty drafts, so it's entirely possible that the ADP swings in the next couple of months as you guys begin doing yours but I think it's important to get my feelings as the months go on based on these players as their ADP shifts maybe I like them a little bit more there'll probably be a video coming soon that is dynasty players that I want you to draft that are must draft players in my, my opinion based off of where they're getting drafted now again a do not draft list does not mean that if this player falls a couple of rounds then you can easily pick them right but currently where they are going in these drafts if you pick them at this point in my opinion it is not worth it and it is going to end up screwing you on the long run so before we get into this video I'd like to ask if at any point you end up enjoying this dynasty do not draft list to so please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below not only is it free I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 dynasty fantasy football leagues your redraft fantasy football leagues any type of fantasy football league you're going to eat that w like your name is famous Jameis Winston all you got to do is hop on board and hit that subscribe button there's also NFL draft content if you guys are dynasty players redraft players you care about the NFL draft you want to get your edge on your opponents in knowing these rookies and the best place to do it is right here on the Notorious Fantasy YouTube channel. So let's get into it. Dynasty do not draft list. Now, the ADP is based off of Superflex, which is what a majority of people play now in Dynasty. Obviously, if you're not in a Superflex league, Baker Mayfield is not going to be picked inside of the fifth round, but he is still going as quarterback 12 on the board, quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. And in my opinion, that is just way too high for the situation that he is in because of how run heavy the Cleveland Browns are as a team. And I just feel like he's never going to hit that potential of being being the quarterback 12 now he's obviously a very safe option to be like quarterback maybe 14 on a year in year out basis but I think as long as Kevin Stefanski is the head coach the amount of rushing this team is going to be doing will not help Baker Mayfield be ultra consistent putting up top 12 numbers like you're hoping for when you draft him at quarterback number 12 last season he finished his quarterback 17 and four point per passing touchdowns leagues and quarterback 16 in six point per passing touchdown leagues he played 16 games in 2020 and he has not had any issues with injury injury so that is some reason why some people might even move him up further but again I'm not too worried about that with most players especially at the quarterback position 305 completions on 486 attempts 3,563 passing yards which is less than his first two seasons interesting enough because his first season he didn't even play the whole season obviously Terod Taylor started off and then the season before or last season 2019 he played better than that in the passing yards department why because they had a different head coach and now with Kevin Stefanski they are going to run the ball more it's not just a narrative that I'm making up in my brain that people are spitting about it is pure facts if you look at the number 18th in the NFL 26 passing touchdowns 12th in the NFL and he had his lowest INTs ever in his NFL career with just 854 rushes 165 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown a lot of fantasy football you are searching for that running quarterback at in the draft pretty much you're looking for a guy who's going to get you those extra points by rushing the ball and Baker Mayfield frankly is not going to do that sure he's probably going to get 100 plus rushing yards every single year but with his likelihood to be running the ball a lot more with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt I just really do not feel like Baker Mayfield is worth anywhere near the pick at quarterback 12 or a fifth round selection in your dynasty startup draft 247.62 four point per passing touchdown points and 299.62 six point per passing touchdown points which comes out to 15.5 points per game and four point per passing touchdown and 18.7 in six point per passing touchdown. Now, I'm not saying that I really think Baker Mayfield is going to be some tort sort of bust when drafting him in your dynasty leagues, but I just don't think he's ever going to have that potential to get over around a quarterback 13 ish play. And when you're drafting him at quarterback 12 in the fifth round, I would definitely be hunting for far more upside than what Baker Mayfield presents in a run heavy NFL offense. Next guy here is Clyde. Edwards Hilaire running back of the Kansas City Chiefs last year this guy was coming off the board higher than Elon Musk so high stars eat our dust because this man was looking like he was going to be a world beater in Kansas City and he was not that running back 13 coming off the board now pick 403 fourth round the third 
pick of the draft. Now, obviously, he's fallen down a bit like Humpty Dumpty off that wall because he has struggled in his first NFL season. I don't think that Clyde Edwards Hilaire is necessarily some type of bum who will never be anything in the NFL, but that price is a little too heavy, in my opinion, to be paying for a running back that I don't feel like has running back one potential for fantasy football because of how pass heavy the Chiefs just are in reality. It makes a lot of sense. And plus, Clyde Edwards Hilaire's size, it doesn't seem like they're using him enough in the rushing department game close to the end zone. So he's never really going to be scoring 10 plus touchdowns. He's never really going to score five receiving touchdowns or something like that. So I just don't feel like Clyde Edwards Hilaire is really worth the pick. But I do think there is potential for his receiving uh, receptions to go very high. 13 games, 181 rushes, 803 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns, 36 receptions on 54 targets, 297 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown. The biggest worry with CEH is that why would they go full workhorse mode with Clyde, Clyde Edwards Hilaire when you can just bring in a second running back? We're seeing Darrell Williams torch it up in the playoffs in the regular season when given the opportunity. It just does not seem like they need to give Clyde Edwards Hilaire seven zillion fucking touches a game for them to win. They could use a revolving door at the running back position. So to me, it seems a little bit risky to be drafting Clyde Edwards Hilaire at running back 13 off the board right now. 176 PPR points, 13.5 per game, and 158 half PPR points per game, 12.2 points per game, 158 half point PPR points. So again, I'm not saying that this guy's going to be a complete and utter cum stain to your team, but he's not going to be the guy that brings you to your championship and you may end up regretting picking him as pretty much a top end running back two, even a running back one almost being running back 13 off the board. I think this is a case of age bringing his ADP up too much and the hope that the Chiefs just somehow turn into this team that's going to run the ball a lot with Clyde Edwards Hilaire, but I got a note for you. That is not going to happen, so I'm not going to be drafting Clyde Edwards Hilaire at all in any any dynasty startup drafts in 2021 at the current price. Again, if his price goes down, he's like top 20 running back, then yeah, fuck it, I'll draft him there. But at running back 13, it seems like too heavy of a price to pay. If you guys have ended up enjoying this video thus far, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Lamar Jackson, quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens, QB5 off the board, pick 112. 112 off the board. Now, Lamar Jackson last year was likely potentially the 101 or 102 in your dynasty startup drafts if you are playing in a super flex format, strictly because his upside was so strong after a very solid performance in the 2020 NFL season. A lot of people like myself were not as on board with Lamar Jackson. I thought he was the second best quarterback, and I thought Patrick Mahomes was worthy of that 101 spot. But even saying he was the second best quarterback was frankly wrong because this guy finished his quarterback 10 on the season in 2020 in four point per passing touchdown leagues, quarterback 10 in six point per passing touchdown leagues as well. Now, I don't think that Lamar Jackson, see, I give a lot of hate towards Lamar Jackson, but it's not because I think Lamar Jackson is necessarily a bad player. It's I think the hype is far too strong for Lamar Jackson when his passing ability just is not there yet. Now, there's going to be people arguing, Nick, this is going to be the year where we see Lamar Jackson take a strong step up in the passing game because they're going to bring in these other wide receivers. They're going to draft someone, Kadarius Tony. They're going to draft X. They're going to draft Y to help out Lamar Jackson. And if that happens and he's successful, well done. But right now with the offense set up for him, I just feel like Lamar Jackson is not going to be a top five quarterback. I think top eight is more likely for Lamar Jackson. So I think drafting him inside of the first round and as a top five quarterback to me just seems a little stupid when you can just wait like a little bit later and select another guy in my opinion that would have a much better chance at finishing higher uh, and I feel like has a better ability to throw the ball while we talked about earlier the quarterbacks you want to have that rushing ability and that is the exact replica of what Lamar Jackson is this guy's amazing at rushing the ball but until his arm can catch up to that rushing ability I feel nervous drafting a guy like Lamar Jackson 15 games played really 14 and a half because the guy had to take a fat dump up against the Cleveland Browns 242 completions on 376 attempts 2757 passing yards 22nd in the NFL 26 passing touchdowns 12th in the NFL to just nine interceptions so his passing touchdowns to INT ratio is pretty good but I feel like he's never going to be a guy that eclipses 3,400 passing yards never going to throw 30 touchdowns probably 
unless Mark Andrews goes completely off. I just worry about Lamar Jackson. Nine INTs, 1,000 rushing yards, seven rushing touchdowns. The 1,000 rushing yards seems almost baked in at this point. He's going to get 900-plus every single year because he's just fucking good at running the ball. But if he is not going to be passing at the correct volume and if he's not going to score seven rushing touchdowns, say he only scores three next year, then you're completely fucked, and I feel like you waste a pick when drafting Lamar Jackson this high. Again, I'm probably going to have him ranked as a top seven quarterback, maybe even quarterback six, but I just don't feel like inside of the first round, at the end of the first round, when you can go ahead and draft other guys later with more upside than I'm going to be looking for Lamar Jackson in my fantasy drafts. I just don't think I like Lamar Jackson all that much. Coming into next year, there's definitely room for improvement, but I do understand why his ADP is so high because of the hype of the player. 332.78 four point per passing touchdown points in 2020, which is 22.2 per game. And 384.78, six-point per passing touchdown points, 25.7 per game. So I definitely worry about Lamar Jackson again because I just don't feel like the passing volume will ever be there for him to really get back to that spot where he was at in 2019. Next player here, we got Michael Thomas, wide receiver of the New Orleans Saints, currently coming off the board at wide receiver five and pick 301. Obviously, that's because this is a super flex league and so many quarterbacks go. There's going to be a lot of running backs going early as well. Michael Thomas, the unanimous wide receiver one of the 2020 fantasy football draft class, completely busted all over your face and you were left leaving like your name was Mia Malkova. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen in 2021 where he completely busts, as it says, running back 97. He was wide receiver 97 and wide receiver 93 in half PPR. Frankly, that's just not going to happen again. But with the impending changes at the quarterback position... I worry about Michael Thomas because right now it is very much unclear who the quarterback is going to be in 2021. Will it be Jameis? Will it be Taysom Hill? Will they draft someone? You don't fucking know right now. So if you're doing your startup draft now, I would really stay away from Michael Thomas. Three months from now, we know we probably will know exactly what's going to be happening in New Orleans. And I'll be able to give a different assumption. Maybe... They got Jameis, and I'm feeling confident in Jameis. Boom. Then you're fine to draft him. But right now, with all the uncertainty, with it potentially being Taysom Hill, with them potentially bringing in a guy via the draft, I don't really know how to feel about Michael Thomas and with his kind of issues. Because he was injured this season, but he also held out for longer because of his an- he was getting angry at these people. I don't fucking understand what is wrong with these good receivers just going completely fucking crazy. Seven games, five games started, 40 receptions, 55 targets, 438 receiving yards, and one rush for one touchdown in all those seven games this man did not score a single touchdown which is very worrisome I think he will be fine in 2021 but I just don't feel like with all these young players coming into these fantasy drafts guys like Justin Jefferson DK Metcalf all these young folks I'm not too sure I want to be drafting Michael Thomas this high. Now, again, I'm not really one of those ageist guys who's just looking to draft the youngest guy and have them ranked higher because of age, because frankly, that's fucking stupid. A lot of dynasty leagues will fold three years from now, and the fact that you wanted to draft X over the proven commodity and a guy like Julio Jones, you're just going to feel like an idiot. But you also have to understand that sometimes the tiebreaker is won by that, especially when you're confused on a player. So with Michael Thomas, I am really looking to stay away. 83.9 PPR points, 12 PPR points per game in 2020, and 63.9 half PPR points, 9.1 per game. I am just not sure what to think about Michael Thomas. And when I'm not completely sold in or sold out, I just look away from the player in my drafts. And the final player for this video is Devin Singletary, running back of the Buffalo Bills. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Running back 29, pick 903. Now, I know what you might be thinking, Nick. Why would you fade a guy at running back 29? It's complete and utter guesses back there. And I agree, but I'd rather take a fucking complete guess, close my eyes, bird box style, and click draft Other than drafting Devin Singletary, I think Devin Singletary is going to get replaced. I think this guy fucking sucks, and I don't understand why he's being drafted here anyways. He he might be a starting running back in the league, but he's not even worth it. I'd rather take a shot on Tariq Cohen than draft a guy like Devin Singletary in the ninth fucking round. Running back 31 in 2020 in PPR, running back 34 in half PPR. 2020 stats, 16 games played, 15 started, 156 rushes, 687 yards, two rushing touchdowns, 38 receptions on 50 targets, 269 receiving yards, one fumble, one 
fumble loss. The guy's numbers are as unimpressive as it gets. The Bills are a pass-heavy team. They don't really like to run the ball. And you don't know why they don't run the ball? Because they can't depend on bum-ass Devin Singletary. Zach Moss is still going to be there. Even if they don't bring in a, another guy, it's going to be the double-headed backfield of Devin Singletary and Zach Moss that just parasitic eats into each other's work. And you'd rather have just drafted some random motherfucker with a funny name and hope that he's better than Devin Singletary because Devin Singletary, frankly, sucks cock for your fantasy football team. 143.6 PPR points, 9 per game, and 124.6 half PPR points, 7.8 per game. I don't really think there's too much to explain here. The Buffalo Bills need to establish the run in all these games, but you want to know why they don't do it? You want to know why they never do? Because Devin Singletary is so poo-poo that it's not even worth it. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video. Also, also forgot to note, Josh Allen's going to vulture 57,000 touchdowns from him. So even if he gets to the red zone, you're like, holy shit, Singletary might run it in. Either Moss is vulturing him or Josh Allen is. So in reality, there's literally no reason to draft Devin Singletary. I don't even understand how he's this high at running back number 29. So have a great rest of your guys' day. I hope you did end up enjoying this masterpiece of a video. I love you all. See you beautiful bastards with another banger in the morning tomorrow. I love you all as always, guys. Stay safe and... Uh, Happy almost February. Bye.